I'm Lisa from The Score Esports, and I'm here with Aframu of CLG, who just won the Spring Split NALCS Playoffs. Congratulations. Thank you. What's up? What's up? <laughs> so I'm going to ask the first question on everyone's mind right now. Is NALCS scripted? Well, <laughs> if it's scripted towards CLG winning, then I guess so. <laughs> but uh, usually the script uh, in the past has uh, TSM winning, but I think we changed that. I think they uh, fired their last script writer, maybe? <laughs> something like that, or we hired him. Oh. Some poaching going on, you know, <laughs> good stuff. So how does it feel, how did it feel to play in Las Vegas on, in the final stage? Well, <clears throat> playing previously for other events, there was nothing like this uh, Mandalay Bay Event Center. I mean, I think this is the loudest the crowd has ever been. No way. So they were like, penetrated my headset. <laughs> so during the game in those hectic team fights, I couldn't hear shit. <laughs> so really, we were just playing it off of feel and uh, watching with the uh, visual cues and stuff like that. So as soon as the, you know, the team fights started happening, it was just like you played with instincts and feeling, basically. So You, you, you actually couldn't hear your, your not, teammates? Not really. It was just all mumbo jumbo because it was so damn loud. So the fans were definitely popping off. You guys almost ruined like the, the team comms, yo. Uh, <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Made for more uh, entertaining games. So, how did it? Uh, how does it compare the finals um, to last split when you played in Madison Square Garden? Hmm. So last split, I would say <clears throat> we had a more solidified style. Mm -hmm. As in, uh, we had Paul Belter play just safe, consistent mids that just formed up and was good later. Uh, Darshan always got the counter pick, and then usually we just played off of uh, Peter and him mo moving around the rap map to get objectives. But this split, we're now able to do a multitude of things with uh, every laner. So Huhi can uh, pressure his lead. Darshan can play tanks for us if we want to play a backline comp like TSM did today. Mm -hmm. And uh, 6A as well. He's able to do that just as well as double F, if not better. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's just easier to play the game, I would say, and not so much a burden on me as uh, last split, where I just had to remember everything and uh, just roll with it like on the fly. Even though we threw out last split, uh, I think the competition in NA got a lot better. And uh, having the backup of uh, f my four other teammates on the team uh, definitely helped a lot. Like, if you were to compare how confident you felt going into the finals last split to how confident you felt going into the finals this split, was, it, was there a difference? Were you more confident this split? Um, there was no difference whatsoever. I was the uh, same confidence <laughs> as I was always. last split. Uh, yeah, pretty much always even kill sort of thing. And uh, most of the time when I get to the finals, I just remind my guys that, you know, I'm not fucking losing the finals <laughs> <laughs> if we get here. So, yeah. No pressure. No pressure. So you guys played the entire five game series, an exhausting series, and you also played the five games with Team Liquid. So maybe did the Team Liquid series kind of help you guys prepare for the exhausting five games today? Uh, actually, our practice uh, scrims two weeks before uh, coming into playoffs. We had best of five mm -hmm. with uh, we booked it with teams to play f five games every day, so that the rookies could uh, acclimate to like the environment of playing five games and you know. In our practice, they definitely got really tired, lost <laughs> focus towards the fifth game. So all that practice definitely helped us uh, get conditioned for these series. And uh, I definitely think that TL, TSM, and Immortals were pretty much all the same level. They have their weaknesses, of course, maybe like mentality-wise, tilting when they lose a game or something like that. But uh, I personally thought TL was the best team coming into playoffs. And so it was a really hard fight series. And then TSM beat Immortals, who wasn't really on the meta. So OK, mm -hmm. I thought that was kind of lucky. IMO, and then TSM came in today with their uh, solidified strat that uh, I have played against, or played as, last split with Peter. So definitely double lift is probably the most vocal on how they should play, mm -hmm. and uh, we definitely saw the same tendencies uh, in their play style coming into this uh, match. So it was very easy for me to predict what they're gonna do, and uh, the game stalled out to, uh, everyone just couldn't take anything so we just had to 5v5 mash it up, guys. And uh, people have been saying, you know, pound for pound, TSM beats us. But obviously, that's not the case now. I wanted to talk a little bit about the picks. What's interesting is that Caitlyn seems to be a huge priority for both of you guys. She was picked in every single game today. Why do you think she's such a high priority right now? Right now, everyone plays. Uh, oh, sorry. sorry. So Caitlyn right now is a long range AD carry. And uh, since everyone is playing the meta top laners, just tanks, tanks, tanks. Uh, you definitely are going to have 
team fights only in this meta because uh, tanks are just so broken to play top lane. And so having the backline, the proper backline damage to win the fight is very important. So if let's say you have two short range carries from mid and AD carry, you're gonna lose the fight because you have to get really close to the enemy team mm -hmm. and the tanks can just collapse on you like that. So you have to have a balance of long range and mid range or short range on any of the roles. So mm -hmm. it has to be long range mid and then you can play a short range AD carry, stuff like that. So that <clears throat> you can space well in team fights. So Azir, we bend Azir, long range mage type of carry. Lulu as well, mm -hmm. pretty long range and can support uh, an AD carry. And so Caitlyn that series, Kaylin is just super broken for contest contesting objectives and putting people off because of traps yeah. and her headshot is just insane. So Kaylin that series double lift is uh, pretty bad, I would say, versus <laughs> long range stuff. He always gets caught out no matter what. And I've known that since I've been playing on team with him forever. So it was very important that we prioritize Kaylin versus him to make him play Calista and stuff like that. And then uh, they realized in the middle of the series that Oh shit, well, we're losing fights, guys. We gotta pick long range because Azir is banned and they can't just pick Lulu every single game. Mm -hmm. So, the last game, uh, thankfully we have Stixie on the team now who uh, is known for his Tristana play. I don't think anyone knows that, but that's his best champion that he performs well on. And uh, we brought it out, even though it didn't work versus the TL series. Uh, <clears throat> it's still really good against Kaylin and that long range, he just outscales Kaitlyn later on in the game if you don't step on traps and stuff like that. So. Uh, that's what we went for this series, and uh, definitely wanted to take it to them head on 5v5 and prove that we're the better team. So, I, I found it really interesting that you waited till game five to pull out the Rage Blade Tristana and yeah. kind of put the pressure on Stixay to carry that game. Did was there any concerns with that? Was he worried? Is there was there that pressure for him? Uh, hell no. So me as his bottom lane, there's no pressure <laughs> for Stixay uh, whatsoever. The only pressure I would say that he has is when uh, we get camped. So usually the meta right now is just all about team plays and stuff like that. And so if we don't, you know, prepare enough or see it coming and they just TP on us, dive us, then it's like, okay. Then it's really pressured to uh, farm up because uh, AD carry role in this meta is really important to get strong because uh, if you don't have that AD carry with a tank top, you're going to, like, lose out on every single fight. So <clears throat> pressure was on him. I uh, definitely help with that a little bit with my uh, wiseness pregame stuff, you know. The Zen Master, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> so yeah. I just make sure that. <clears throat> holy shit, I'm losing my voice, guys. It's okay. It's, it's, okay. it's dry here. It's I dry here. I just make sure <laughs> that uh, all my teammates know that we believe in them and they don't really have to prove anything to one another on the team right now. That's how it feels. And they can just, you know, play how they want to play and play their hearts out. And no one is going to judge them for it on the team. So I think that confidence from uh, your teammates definitely goes a long way. Now, one of the big storylines for this, the finals, is that, you know, TSM CLG rematch, you versus Doublelift. So with that in mind, did you guys maybe talk about it before the match? Maybe like, good luck or, you know, I hope you suck? Oh, with him? Yeah, with oh. him. Oh. <laughs> um, no. No? I didn't really talk with him about it. I think uh, <clears throat> we just both uh, go for the, uh, our play says what we want to say. And uh, definitely that series, it was pretty easy to play bottom lane and uh, both bottom lanes definitely had something to prove and that's how it was going the whole series we were in the bottom play first and so uh we definitely just abused their weakness and tsm's bottom lane was the weak point of their team so darshana said last year when you guys won like you guys were just tired of losing and then you guys won and now this is the second time you guys are winning how does it feel to be two times you know nalcs champions <laughs> uh feels natural to be the two-time nalcs champions i would say uh we came into this year knowing that uh, we picked up the better roster and to uh, have a higher ceiling going into Worlds and stuff like that. So we just want to win everything as uh, us five individuals and the coaching staff, of course. Mm -hmm. So it's not an easy road and everybody is just willing to put in the hard work for us to get there. And uh, that's how we got here today. Now looking forward, you guys are gonna be going to MSI next. Thoughts of going to Shanghai? Are you excited? And how do you think it's going to be facing in another international competition? So going to Shanghai for MSI, it's going to be pretty scary going to China. <laughs> There's like the most populated place on the planet, and uh, that scares you, man. Hell yeah, that scares me. They got <laughs> they got laws over there. And if I walk somewhere, I just get thrown in jail or something like that. You know. Yeah. So, uh, but going to Shanghai is going to be definitely a great experience. I've never been to China, but I heard it's a great place, and. Uh, it's going to be a fun experience for my teammates and I, as well as playing against the international teams that are going there. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll definitely help us get prepared for Worlds, I would say. And uh, it's an experience that we can get and no one else can get in NA. So it's just that much better. 
Well, congratulations on your win out for me. Thank you so much for this interview. You. And you guys, if you guys enjoyed this, be sure to check out the rest of our content on our channel.